the Spirit of the may I invite you to talk to us and correction. The Amarelu and Tanaros to the glory of God. Thank you. God bless. God bless. Your Excellency, the Governor of River State, Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of River State, the Right Honorable Speaker, Distinguished Senators, Members of the House of Representatives, members of the State House of Assembly, and our ebullient, courageous, hardworking chairman of this local government. My brother, the National Vice Chairman of the South South. members of my entourage from Lagos State, and may I mention Dr. Mrs. Rowley, she is from Delta, but she's my wife, the former Director General of the NDLA. Then my dear older sister there, former Deputy Governor of Lagos State, and now a full-time board member of the Board of Trustees of our party. Senator Kufu Akirili Bokto, and the former acting secretary of our party, Dr. Remy Akitoye, and uh, Dr. Nero Adeniji, one of our old members and an elder of the party, and uh, the chairman of the chairman of the local government in Lagos State. Is also here at Boega, and of course, uh, an unusual professional, Dr. Fawole. He's also a medical doctor and also a legal practitioner. <laughs> you find these kind of uh, uh, professions, we don't normally mix. I'm an engineer and I'm an engineer, but you find a man who is a consultant. He has the largest hospital in Surulere, but he's also a, 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 a legal practitioner. So I welcome all of you. And the good people of Olemelu, I salute you. And I am so happy to be amongst you. Today, we are present here in Portaco for this epoch making event and commissioning of this project. It is an attestation that good things can still come out of Nigeria. At the outset, let me express how delighted I am at the commissioning of this project. Governor Wike has distinguished himself as one of the most performing governors, if not the most performing in Nigeria today. This is a characteristic which distinguishes him as an outstanding, brilliant achiever and one who continues to chart a way forward for modeling strong commitment to national development. The impressive 
weekly commissioning of projects across river state is also a testament to the visionary leadership of Governor Wiki as witnessed by other PDP governors across this country. History now testifies to the non-performance and poor governance by the APC that has befallen this country since 2015 and has negatively affected the fortunes of our nation. We as Nigerians feel the present turbulent and violent state of the country where incessant failures exist across all sectors with almost collapsed economy, the security system, education, agriculture, and foreign relations. The only sector that is fully active and working in the APC-led federal government is the monumental corruption in the land. Since 2015, insecurity is not only rising arithmetical and geometrical proportion, but exponentially threatening the very existence of the unity of our country. Today, Nigeria, the most populous black nation on earth, is at a crossroad. The more than 200 million inhabitants of this Ge geographical location are in trouble. This is a consequence of the emergence of the APC to the helm of affairs at the national level. The first fundamental right of any Nigerian is the right to life. But this is being observed in the breach by the present government. It is also regrettable that the federal government statutorily mandated to ensure the protection of lives and property as enshrined in the 1999 Constitution seems incapable of fully controlling the vagaries of attacks, kidnappings, and even killings in our land. Decades ago, Nigerians moved freely from north to south, from east to west, but today, things are no longer normal. Dangerous and despicable things are happening in the world's sixth largest producer of oil, a nation that can no longer account for about 500,000 barrels of crude oil stolen daily due to complicity, insecurity, and maladministration. Terrorists run amok in our land on a daily basis with cases of extrajudicial killings already reaching an alarming crescendo. Some bloodthirsty maniacs supported and funded by satanic ex external forces with a conquest agenda are on the rampage, kidnapping, raping, killing our people with uncanny wickedness. Although the federal government has promised to check the rampaging lunatics, Nigerians are yet to be convinced of a decisive clampdown on these killers. Terrorists are being granted amnesty, and their victims are completely left in the state of hopelessness. This, therefore, is a government that made a dollar at less than 200 naira but today, naira to dollar is 700 naira to one dollar. There's no way we can guarantee peace and security if this country is not restructured. It is my belief that if this country is restructured in a way that every locality controls the instrumentality of security, the wanton killings of Nigerians will stop considerably. If our country is also restructured economically, no finance commissioner will be going to Abuja every month to collect the pittance 
in the name of monthly allocation. There's no region in the world that becomes prosperous without being industrialized. Industrialization is only achievable in a nation if there is constant supply of power. How do you industrialize without a solid power sector? In the last few months, the national greed had collapsed more than three times. But the national greed of the APC government has not collapsed. If this country is restructured equitably, the current revenue sharing formula in which the federal government collects 52.6% of centrally collected revenue in the Federation account, leaving states to only 26.7% and local governments as 20.6% will stop. Even the so-called fight against corruption is being guided by blind loyalty to APC and their cronies, but not in the interest of our great nation, Nigeria. Appointments are being guided by ethnic interests rather than on merit. Nigerians are tired and are waiting for a party in 2023. If this country is restructured politically, responsible politicking through independent candidature will be introduced into our polity, which will automatically knock out Godfatherism from our politics. You see, you hear, when a seven national chairman of our party is calling elected governors that they are children, does he think that children don't grow? Or there is a life perpetual on him? We need to watch our language. It shows to me that it is him that is immature. To have an egalitarian society, restructuring is the answer. We want Nigeria to survive as a nation. That is why we are agitating that Nigeria must be restructured and our political and economic powers must derive legitimacy from the people. Nigeria is growing through various crises today because some leaders are stubbornly against restructuring. But I want to assure this gathering and the good people of River State that by the grace of the Almighty God that we serve, whether now or in the future, Nigeria, our country, will be restructured. Another issue I want to raise is the new electoral process. While it is known that President Buhari will be remembered for proposing a new electoral bill that allows electronic transmission of results to the central server, thus removing the manipulation of election results by unscrupulous persons. I want to sound it loud and clear that we will not allow any manual system in the 2023 general election. We all say yes to electronic transmission of results because it worked on the 16th of July, the governorship election in Oshun, the governorship election in Anambra, and the governorship election in Ekiti State. That is the way it is done over the civilized world. The world cannot be moving forward and our nation Nigeria moving backward due to unscrupulous and deceitful characters. I will now use this opportunity to say something about the crisis in our party, the PDP. As we prepare to begin campaigning for 2023 general elections at the end of this month, we must be united in our determination to ensure that the PDP returns to the presidential villa in Abuja on May 29, 2023. And by the grace of God and the will of the people, that will happen. 
But we can only go back to Asuro if we are united and not divided. Some people are abusing Governor Wiki, that is a troubleshooter. Those abusing him as an elder, as a father in this party, I am directing them. They must stop immediately because Governor Wiki is only fighting for justice, for equity and fairness in our party. He is not only a strong pillar in this party, but a mobilizer, a financier, and an actualizer. Since he joined the PDP, he has not left this party. I am also a founding father of the party, and since 1998, I have not left this party. What we are saying is that the issue of the national chairman of PDP must be addressed before the commencement of the campaign for 2023 general election. It is an antithesis and against the norm and culture of our party that our presidential candidates, our national chairman, and the chairman of the board of trustees will come from one section of the country. Party members from the South are already feeling alienated. PDP is not a private company. Before we start the presidential campaign at the end of this month, the national chairman must go to the South. This is all Governor Wike is saying. And as a life member of the Board of Trustees of our party, I support this position 100%. Statutorily, it is the national chairman who hands over the party's flag to our presidential candidate. How will party members of the South feel when they see that all, at all political rallies, Southerners have no public political representation. This constitutes a fundamental flaw and lack of, lack of inclusiveness, which will be diametrically opposed to the original thinking of the founding fathers of our party. Maybe if IU had remained perpetual in the party, he would have learned the ropes much better. Governor Wike is not saying anything out of anger. Is only telling the truth to power. We don't want to have, please listen, we do not want to have a Northern People's Democratic Party and a Southern People's Democratic Party. We don't want to go into election divided. Don't let them remind us that this is the time for the amalgamation to be revisited. Nigerians, we have to be extremely careful as we move around. What is good for the goose is good for the gander. That is why the national chairmanship must come to the South now as a matter of urgency. We're not begging for it. We demand it because it is our right. Once, once again, I want to congratulate my brother, Governor Wiki, for your unprecedented achievements in this state. I know Rivers people will still witness more commissioning of projects before 29th May 2023, when you will leave office as one of the most performing governors in the history of Rivers State. Finally, let me congratulate and thank the good people of Rivers for your forbearance and cooperation to your son, His Excellency Governor Wiki, during this period of his stewardship. May our Papa in heaven, our good Lord that we serve, continue to grant you all peaceful coexistence and bliss as we commence our political journey to 2023. Finally, 
I want to say it shall be well with all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. It shall be well with all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. I now have the pleasure to commission these internal roads to the glory of the Almighty God and for the benefit of all the good people of Emerilu, it shall be well with you. I will carry this experience back home. It will be everlasting in my mind. But God will guide you. No accidents will occur on this road. You will go in by His grace. You will come back. Whatever businesses you are running, you will make your gains and be able to positively impact on your family. I thank you for your attention and God bless you all.